Good morning, good morning again, and welcome to the 2022 Professional Development Small Business Series hosted by the UAB Department of Small Business Inclusion. I am Tamika Logan Reynolds, and I am your announcer for the morning. And I wanna thank you all for joining us for this first time training series designed with small businesses in mind. Please welcome Ms. Demetria Scott, who is the manager of the Department of Small Business Inclusion. She'll bring today's welcome and greeting. Ms. Scott. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Tamika. Welcome to our annual Communicating with Social Media and Marketing uh, Small Business Inclusion Seminar. As Tamika stated, my name is Demetria Scott. I'm the manager in the department. And on behalf of Gregory Parsons, who is the Associate Vice President and Chief Facilities Officer for the uh, Division of Facilities, welcome to each of you. We appreciate you taking time from your busy schedule to attend this event. You are in for a real treat. Our facilitator, Ms. Courtney Woods, will provide to you a wealth of information on marketing and branding your business. So let's listen and learn together. Again, you are welcome. I turn it back over to Tamika. Thank you, Ms. Scott. The purpose of the Small Business Inclusion Professional Development Series is to provide tools and information needed for potential and or current small business owners to set up or maintain a successful small business enterprise. Small businesses make up an important part of the economic infrastructure of the state of Alabama. This series will provide the tools and knowledge needed to successfully start or expand a small business in the local community, to help build capacity, and to finally do business with UAB. Certificates of completion will be awarded to attendees who successfully complete each session. Again, today's session is titled Communicating You, Social Media Graphics and Marketing. We have two additional sessions as part of this series and they are Money Matters, Financing Your Business. That one will be held March 22nd at the UAB Alumni House. Also, Group Purchasing Organizations, better known as GPOs, Winning Back Your Buying Power. That one will be held on May 24th, again at the UAB Alumni House. Please note that those seminars that are scheduled for face-to-face -face may eventually have to be virtual. If again, the COVID-19 rates rise or escalate again, we will revert those back to being virtual, but we will keep a watch on all of that. And now for our presenter, Ms. Courtney Woods. Master Promotional Graphic Designer is Ms. Courtney Woods, also known as Tech Queen 88. She is the owner of Professional Creations Technology and Design Group. Her design agency is a full service website and graphic design company focused on providing state of the art tech and design solutions for brands, companies, and nonprofits. Professional Creations is known for designing the pop, stand, out, and get noticed, specializing in visually appealing graphics, website, design, landing pages, sales funnels, content, backend systems, and more. Courtney gracefully breaks down the complexity of technology and graphic design to help you tackle the obstacles that stand in the way of your online goals. And she freely shares her tips design trends and growth practices with other creative entrepreneurs like yourself. Her expertise comes from her genuine passion and skill set for her job. Courtney's ability to successfully implement high converting promotional designs, websites and sales funnels, improve, the stream, improve and streamline operational processes from front end to back end. And this has made her a sought after master promotional graphic designer. Please welcome our presenter this morning, Ms. Courtney Woods. Courtney, you can begin uh, screen sharing when you're ready.
Good morning. How are you all today? Can y'all hear me okay? Let me know if you can. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Communicating You. I am so excited to go over my super secret social media and marketing tips with you all today. Um, like Tamika was saying, I am a master promotional graphic designer. The name of my company is Professional Creations, and we specialize in promotional design and websites, okay? So I am definitely going to be spilling a lot of information with you all today. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you real quick and we can go ahead and get started, all right? Okay, so can y'all see my screen okay? No, we can't see it. You say you can't see it? We see it now. <clears throat> okay, let me come back in and make sure, just so I can make sure I got the... Um, Okay, so yes, if you can see my screen, okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the presentation. So again, today we're going over social media graphics and marketing. And again, welcome to the training. So let me, hold on one second, y'all. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So I want to go over with you today what we're going to cover. Um, we're actually going to work ourselves backwards just a little bit because I want you some concepts that I want you to understand first, and then we're going to jump into some of the more um, deeper things like branding and actually creating your visuals all the way through what you should know about SEO. So today we're gonna start off going over designing social graphics, and then we're gonna move on to branding and creating visuals. And then we're gonna move on to determining your target audience. And last, but most definitely, definitely not least, we're gonna talk about some things that you should know about SEO, okay? All right, so moving right along. Um, again, my name is Courtney Woods, also Tech Queen 88 in the digital world. I'm gonna be your instructor today. Um, I specialize in designing websites, landing pages, digital media, and graphics as a master promotional graphic designer. And I also enjoy teaching students, small business owners, creative entrepreneurs like yourself, how to design sites, pages, and graphics that simplify their functionality, decrease their bounce rates and increase conversions. Um, I actually graduated from UAB class of 2012 with a BS in business management and HR. And I am the graphic design director for two 501c3 foundations, the Confess Project as well as help organization, okay? So that's a little bit about what qualifies me to help you all today. Um, moving right along, we're gonna jump into designing social graphics, okay? So when you're creating your social graphics, I want you all to put in the comments, do you have a design strategy or are you just creating things to post? Um, and let me know if you have a design strategy, you can drop the number one. If you do not have a design strategy and you're just randomly throwing stuff out there and popping together a flyer at the last minute to make a quick announcement or something, then I want you to drop a number two in the comments so I can see where you all are. Okay, let me check the chat. Okay, so I see a one, I see a few more, I see a lot of twos, okay, okay, I see another one, so I see where we are. Um, so moving forward, this is what I'm going to let you all know, because I see a lot of twos here, it's a lot more twos than ones, so that means that you all may not know what a design strategy is, so basically you're definitely in the right place, because I'm going to share all of this information with you, um, so basically what your design strategy is, it's going to be your blueprint, okay, okay. 
You have to start off with a really good solid blueprint to go by um, so that you can keep your branding consistent and people can recognize your content no matter what platform is on, okay? So moving right along, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to create your social media design strategy, okay? Because your design strategy is gonna encompass a lot of things, even um, things that can be used on your website as well. But I want to focus on your visual post plan for your social media design strategy, okay? So moving right along, um, basically what a visual post plan is, is it's going to give you a really good visual of what it is, especially if you have a growing team, okay? This is gonna make things a whole lot easier for you as you try to grow and scale. Your visual post plan is going to encompass your social media design strategy. So it's an example that you can see on my screen right now. Um, this is for one of the nonprofits that I designed for. So what we do, um, when I first started working with this nonprofit, they were fairly small, um, probably just in the first couple of years of getting started. And since then, we have seen them grow tremendously and you know, spread into other cities around the country, um, all kind of growth that we've seen with them. And this is one of the strategies that I came up for their particular brand. So basically what it is, as their team continues to grow, it's people that need to have access to maybe change some things on the social graphics. Some other people may be posting to their social media. Um, They'll contact me for website updates and certain things that they can't do, but this is the type of visual post plan that we would create for them. So they have in-person and online events. So if you can see the very first graphic that we have on here is an event flyer, okay? So if a team member logs onto this page, they can click the little arrows and the arrows will show them all of the previous designs on that template. The second template that we have on here, and basically, if you don't know what a template is, it's pretty much kind of like a blueprint that you can use to create, recreate something. So if I were to send you a template in Canva, it might have some information in there that you don't need to use, but you can remove that information and replace it with your information. Remove those pictures and replace it with your pictures. So with these types of social graphic templates, basically what they'll do is they'll go in, they'll make a copy of the design, whatever event is going on, they will replace the information that's there with the information for the current event, okay? So same thing with the second flyer for um, promotion of any type of courses or classes that they're offering. It's the same type of thing. And then also the invite to apply is the third one that we see on here. So they're constantly hiring for different positions or trying to fill new roles because they're growing so quickly. So um, on the invite to apply, social graphic, we pretty much just click now recruiting at the top, a paragraph about the job description, and then the actual job title right up under it, okay? Okay, and so anytime someone on the team needs to edit that, again, they can click right on the purple button at the up under it where it says use template and it'll pop them straight over into the template so that they can edit it okay so the second row you'll see announcements so that is the template that we use when we make announcements um funders that's the template that we use when we have new funders and we want to give them a shout out and tell people a little bit about them and um, trainings and webinars. It's another template that we use for trainings and webinars. And when they click through the arrow, it'll show them all the previous designs. So if they see something different that they wanna use, they can use that one, okay? 
So um, your visual post plan is going to be a part of your design strategy. It's going to use the same type of branding, fonts, colors, your logo. Um, I like to start off by getting what I like to call a core image or a digital visual that really encompasses your brand and what it stands for, your target audience and the people that you're trying to reach. And I like to use those same digital visuals from the website to the social graphics and all of that stuff, okay? All right, so that's a really good starting point. Um, let me see if I can actually pull this page up so that I can show it to you all. I have to do it in a separate window. Give me one second, you guys. You know how the little, um, when you're sharing your screen, okay, there we go. <laughs> The Zoom thing is always in the way. Okay, let's see if I can share this screen with you all. So you can get a good visual on this end of how it works. So I'm gonna share a different screen. Okay, can you all see that okay? I just switched the screen that I was sharing. So on the back end of the Confess Project website, we have several pages that are only accessible to team members and admins. So you will have to be logged in in order to see this page and you'll also have to be considered a team member or admin. And um, basically this is exactly what I just showed you all in the Canva presentation. So if we come right here and we click on these arrows, it will pull up the previous flyers. Okay, so these last few flyers that you see in here that we're skimming through, I did not touch or create any of these. Let me see, I created this one. I did do this template. So basically what they'll do when they need a new flyer for an event or something that they have going on, they land on this page. They can flip through here if they want to. They can click right here to share with somebody else on the team, or they can click this purple button to go ahead and use the template. And once they click to use the template, it opens up Canva in another window, okay? And they'll be able to go in and edit, okay? If you have a Canva account, I want you to drop the number one in the comments. If you do not have a Canva account, I want you to drop the number two in the comments. Canva is a online cloud-based design platform for people that need to create designs for their brands, for their nonprofits, for different events or whatever it is that they have going on. It's fairly easy to use, but um, yeah, I see a couple of tools in here, mostly ones, so that's good. A lot of people are familiar with Canva. Okay, Greg said he has a social media person. That's awesome. I do too. <laughs> because um, definitely that's important because no matter what it is that you do. Uh-oh, did my whole screen just go away? Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, you're doing great. Um, we still see your screen. Kind of move your mouse maybe and see if it comes back up. Okay that work. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, a lot of times, no matter what it is that you do, it is really important as you grow and continue to grow more and more that you focus on the things that you have to focus on in order to bring in more money for your brand, okay? So I found myself, I would have, because um, on my Tech Queen social media page, I would try to do all my stuff myself because I knew that I could. But at the end of the day, I still needed to get somebody to help me because it's only 24 hours in the day. And I would 
prefer to spend majority of my time making sure that my clients have everything that they need. Everybody's designs are done on deadline, working on things on the back end, creating new designs and setting up automations and everything on the front end, taking phone consultations, doing design strategy sessions with people. That's what I spend majority of my time doing. So when you calculate up that time, it really doesn't leave me a whole lot of time to sit down and create new content, which if you, you know, take a day or two and just kind of prepare and set up your templates and go ahead and load up the scheduler, you can, but it's not something that I would find myself doing. So I would go months without posting anything and it killed my um it killed a lot of my conversions and my engagement on my page so we were in the process of getting that bill back up so I did hire a social media person to you know that's your job your job is to post twice a day your job is to um you know we meet a couple of times a month and it's something that I don't have to worry about it's out of my hands I knew it was important so I did not want to just um say you know, in my mind, honestly, I said, well, I'm helping my clients. They're getting what they're needing. Um, I don't have time to post on social media right now. But at the end of the day, if it's something that um, you know that you need help with, get help. Okay. All right. So thank you for sharing that, Mr. Greg. So basically inside of Canva, if I wanted to, let's go to one of the previous flyers. So if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to redo this flyer. We have another event. Um, it's going to be a different guest, but it's going to be um, at the same place on a different day in a different time. So basically all I would do is hit the duplicate page button just so we'll still have the old copy in case we need it. Um, so once you duplicate it, it's now two copies here. So I would just simply come in here and change the text to new special guests. Okay, whatever new picture it is of the new person, we'll pop that in here. So let's just say, for instance, um, it's a new special guest. So I'm just going to search for just a random picture real quick by clicking on elements and typing man. We'll put businessman. Businessman in the search box. And the way Canva has it set up now, if you click on photos, it'll filter it and only show you just the photos. So we scroll through here. We can find a picture or two to add to this template. Um, of course, if this were like a real flyer for a real event, we would have the special guest speaker picture. But um, so let's just say this is our new special guest for this event. So I'm going to actually click on edit image. And I like to use the background remover tool. Um, I see that the little crown is next to it. So I know that that means that you have to have a pro account in order to use this feature. Um, and there are a lot of great features inside of the pro account. If you have one, then you're probably used to using them. But if not, um, it's good to be able to do simple things like this all inside of the same program. So there we go. We got our new guest speaker. And then we would change the information location. If we wanted to change the background photo, we can do that as well. And now it's already sized for social media. So if we click right here to resize um, 1080 by 1080, those are the dimensions of the perfect Instagram grid post that goes on your wall. Um, if you have a design that is not the same width and the same height, if it's not equal, the ratio um, won't be one-to-one -one and it won't show up correctly on your page unless it's a certain way that you um, click in the settings while you're doing your post, okay? Um, and then also, if you click on resize, you can search for real 
and you can resize it to be the real size for Instagram and Facebook now. Facebook's doing reels now. Um, also, you can do a story size here. And then a lot of times when I do videos and channel covers for thumbnail for thumbnails for people YouTube channel, I'll come in here and resize it this way. So you can resize it for the perfect dimensions if you have a Canva Pro account. So I just showed you two things, removing the background and also the option to resize your designs that you can do if you have a Pro account. And it's several other things as well, but I just wanted to touch on that, okay? So I am going to go back to sharing the other screen. All right, we're back. Okay, so moving right along, that was the visual post plan. This is actually a service that we offer. Um, we have the visual post plan and we also have the content booster if you just want us to design the stuff and send it to you. But if you actually want the post copy, the text, the, all of this stuff set up like this for your team to use as you grow, we create these as well, okay? So and next we're gonna get into branding and creating visuals, okay? So this is super important. The little graphic that you see right here, it is actually for a um, our Vision to Life Master Planner that we created the last quarter of last year. And this is one of the little graphics that we created to promote it. So we use graphics like this on the website, um, on the sales landing page, okay? Um, anytime that you're trying to promote a particular product, service, or event, you're going to need a sales landing page. Don't send your traffic to the homepage of your website if you're just trying to promote one thing for the moment, okay? But um, yeah, so the Vision to Life Master Planner, this is one of the graphics that we use on the sales landing page to promote it. And we also use this type of graphic on social media, um, social graphics, flyers, and things like that. So we're going to move into branding and creating visuals. So I definitely want to show you how you can start. I know I mentioned when we were talking about design and social graphics on the last slide, how you can go ahead and start by creating one visual and use it across all platforms, okay? My screen went out again. I think I got too much stuff going on over here. Can y'all still see me okay? Yep. Did you try okay. moving your mouse? Is it back? Um, it might take a second this time. It looks looking like it's going to pop back up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's so <silly> screen. <laughs> okay, so moving right along. Um. So these are some different examples of what I like to call digital visuals, okay? And I created the word digital visuals because I was actually designing some things for a business card one day. And the visual that I created to go on the business card, I used that exact same visual at the top of the website. I used that exact same visual for their social media graphics. And it became kind of like, um, like the statement piece for their brand that was used on their pop-up banners and their postcard flyers and all of that stuff. So basically what a digital visual is, is like the one I just showed you all on the previous screen. Um, it's a digital image or graphic that you put together to give people an idea of what you're communicating visually, okay? So digital visuals are all about communicating visually. Why is it important to communicate visually? Well, we live in a generation of visual buyers with short attention spans, okay? People have 
super short attention spans, um, much shorter than they've ever been. Um, that's why you see a lot of times on your stories, you only have like 10 or 15 seconds to show whatever that you're trying to show in your stories on social media. Um, also, you might notice some of your favorite YouTubers may um, trim down some of their video content. So if they used to post longer content, they still might post the video here and there. That's an hour or so long, but majority of the videos that they're going to post, if they're thinking about things from a marketing aspect, are going to be a lot shorter. I know it's a particular person that I enjoy listening to, and she pops on probably every other day, and she drops like a two to three minute video listen to it every single morning okay so basically since we live in a generation of visual bias with short attention spans we have to grab their attention in like the first millisecond because if you don't grab first millisecond they're gone and they may never come back okay and we this is first impressions we only get one shot so your visual communication truly does matter, okay? So we want people to land on our sites and pages, on our websites and our landing pages, and we want people to see our content on social media and immediately get an idea of what to expect, okay? Now, they're still going to have to read to get the details, but we still want to make sure that we're communicating visually with them, okay? So I'm gonna um, click play right here. This is on a website, just some visual elements to highlight their process structure. So their process goes from one, two, three, four, and five, and we have an image to really represent each step in their process. So that's one thing that we really like to highlight on the sites and pages that we create is we like to highlight people's processes. So if you have a process where even if it's a super simple process, like customer places in order, um, we fulfill the order, we deliver the order. That's a simple process, but we still want to make sure that we're communicating things like that visually on our sites and pages. And then it also gives us more content because we can also communicate that via our social graphics as well, okay? Um, down here at the bottom, this is a digital visual of a workshop that I did at a workshop called Digital Visuals. <laughs> so this is a... Um, uh, digital visuals for <laughs> for a um, workshop that I did called digital visual. All right, so um, down here at the bottom, this is the top fold of the Confess Projects website. We use these same guys in a lot of our branding and marketing for this nonprofit um, because it really helps to get people the overall message when they land on the website they see the barbershop in the background they see the two guys because the confess project trains barbers to be mental health advocates in the black community and they focus on brown and black boys and their families um, and they've been doing some amazing things in the community last year they were able to raise one million dollars for the first time they've only been around for a short amount of years this year they have goals to raise eight million dollars and i know that they're going to reach their goal um and the founder of the organization tells me that i my company we are the backbone of everything that they do, okay? Because we're the ones setting up the automations, creating the websites, putting together the sales pages, coming up with the visual post plans and all of this stuff on the back end. Um, and we've been doing an amazing job at it and they're really happy with our work. Um, so much so that the, the founder actually stepped down recently so that he could focus more on him and his family's legacy, really trying to build a solid legacy foundation for his wife, his daughter, and the rest of their family. So, um, but he's still connected to the Confess Project. And um, 
they're spreading into other cities now. So definitely for the founder to tell us that we're the backbone of everything that we do. And the main thing that we do for them is their digital visuals, is their social graphics, is make sure that we have their design strategies solid, is we set up their automations and all of that stuff. That shows me that this is more important than you can ever imagine, okay? So I'm really thankful to be a part of people's growing process in that light. So I'm so happy to be able to share this information with you all today. Um, here's another example. This is a sales landing page. This particular sales landing page is geared towards women. Majority of her clients that she works with are normally Black women. So we like to create the branding to kind of fit whatever her brand colors are, her target audience, and um, her brand's personality. So that's what we're thinking about when we choose the colors and all of this. And also a lot of these graphics like this one right here is also used for social media. Um, we did not do a visual post plan for this particular brand, but we did do what we call a content booster. Our content booster service includes five social graphics or five digital graphics of any kind so that can be you know a video that can be a few static images whatever it is it's going to communicate whatever your offer is okay because we want to make sure that's another thing with our social graphics we want to make sure that we have a clear call to action when you make a post what is the goal of that post? What are you trying to get people to do? When you make a post, no matter how nice your flyer is, no matter how beautifully designed your social graphic is, what is it that your goal is that you're wanting people to do? What, what are you trying to accomplish with this post? So when you post, are you wanting people to click a link so that they can schedule a phone consultation with you? Are you wanting people to click a link so that they can go and purchase um, the Vision for Life Master Planner, okay? Are you wanting people to click a link so that they can land on your sales page and they can sign up for whatever type of training or course or product or service that you have available? Okay, what goal are you trying to reach with your social graphics? You want to make sure that you have a call to action for every single thing you post, okay? Even if it's just, um, you know, if it's not a link, if it's uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter or something like that. Make sure that you're always directing them to do something. Tamika, I see you got your hand raised. You need to pop in. Yes, Ms. Presenter, I have a question. I couldn't see the bottom part of the screen. I can only see the gentleman about the barbershop. So there was another one you were just talking about. I just couldn't see that. I wanted to see what that graphic was. Okay, the barbershop is at the bottom. Um, okay. What graphic are you referring was there, to? Was there one about the, the lady that you were saying you used certain colors for her? Yeah, it's right here. Um, can you see it? It's moving. Well, it was moving. Okay. It's the one right here. You see it in the middle? I can't see you moving, but that's okay. I just, I thought it was something below them. That's okay. No, it's, a, it's right above the them. Okay, okay. You see it now? It's not good. I, I just you. see the one that says product services and offers. Okay, so yeah. you can't see anything above that? Uh-huh. I see blue, blue um, emotion and personality processes, benefits, features. Not another graphic though. So okay. y'all can't see this pink um, branding with the gray background where it says ready, set, goals at the top, right next to, can y'all see where it says digital visuals in the top left-hand mm -hmm. corner? Top left corner, yes. Okay, so directly next to that, you can't see that sales page? I no. can't. You can? No, I can't. No. no. Okay, so nobody else can either. Okay, okay. I thought it was just me. That's okay. I see we have, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. It was just like a little blue play button on each one and nothing was there. I'm sorry. 
that's okay. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm not in case you messed up. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you for letting me know. But this is the one I was referring to. Um, okay. So, yeah, it has her branding and a lot of the little graphics, the digital visuals that we have on the page we use for social posts. Like even if you see right here, hold on, let me, um, trying to pause it. So even if you look right here, on her sales page, we're using this graphic to show people what they're getting. So we're letting them know that you're gonna get this book in addition to the other things. Um, but if you look at this post, it's the exact one-to-one -one ratio of an Instagram post. So this can easily be posted on Instagram along with the copy. Did you know that this book is included inside of our Ready, Set, Go package? All you have to do is click this link to sign up. You're going to get the book. You're going to get a session with me. You're going to be a part of the self-paced program community and on and on and on. Here's the link to sign up. And then if we want to create a sense of urgency, we're going to put a time limit on it. So we'll let them know um, you can get 50% off through Friday only or we'll let them know the first five people to sign up, get you know an extra two hour session with me or get an extra service or something like that. So you really wanna get creative with that promotional aspect. And we want to create digital visuals that we can use other places. So this graphic can be used on social media multiple times, you post it as many times as you want. And this graphic is also on the sales page. Um, and then the graphic right up under it is another graphic um, to let them know about the accountability sessions that they're getting. And that can be posted on social media as well. So we really want to make sure that we are thinking about things like this when we're creating our graphics so that we can make it easier as we continue to grow. Um, and then down here at the bottom of the page, this is the initial graphic that I was saying that um, we could use on social media to promote this particular package, okay? All right, so definitely wanna be thinking about that. Um, these are some graphics, some gifts that we created inside of the Design Online Challenge that I do. It's a five-day challenge to help people really get started designing their business online. And then these, down, if y'all can see this video down here at the bottom corner, this is a page that we created for a team and it has different trainings on there for the team to be able to go through. So if somebody new on the team is doing graphics or somebody new on the team is doing YouTube for the brand, they can pop in, look at the video library, see the instructions, and they'll be able to create from there, okay? So we really want to make sure that we supply our team with all of the branding things that they're going to need, um, all of the information and trainings and all of that stuff that they're going to need so that in, you know, some of us may be working with contractors and that's fine too, but we still got to make sure that we're communicating these things with the people that are designing for us, okay? All right, so those were digital visuals, very near and dear to my heart. If you ever hear anybody else use that word, they got it from me, okay? <laughs> Moving right along, um, determining your target audience, okay? So remember at the beginning, I said that we were gonna work our way backwards a little bit. So this is definitely what we're doing. The section after this is things you should know about SEO. So uh, you would really want to start off um, with your sites and pages so that you can have a link to send people to so that you can get paid so you can get deposits online so that's where you would start and also when you're creating your sites and pages you're going to be determining your target audience and when you're creating your social graphics you want to make sure that you've already determined your target audience so that you know who you're speaking to on your sites and pages and also in your social media posts okay so 
determining your target audience for your unique brand. And you can have multiple audiences, okay? So you don't have to just have just one. But the way that I like to think about it is if you've already, let's see, if you are already in business and you've been doing this for a while and I want you to drop a number one in the comments, if you are just getting started with your organization, I want you to drop a number two in the comments, okay? So if you've been doing this for a while, drop the number one. If you're just getting started, drop a number two. Somebody said you need to trademark the name. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I do. I need to look into that because it's, you know, just in case the feds watching, you know, and over here, feds mean freeloaders trying to steal design strategies. Okay. So just in case it's some freeloaders out here trying to steal my design strategies, I need to have myself protected. You're right. Um, you know, I, I've been working on getting a couple of logos protected in my better believe my vision to life master planner is protected all the way so um yeah you're right about that it's something i need to look into okay so moving right along so determining the target audience what i like to do so hold on let me pull the chat back up um to see where we are okay i see some people said they're just getting started i see some ones Okay, so we look like we're kind of about even. So no matter if you're just getting started or you've been out here killing it, basically what you're gonna do is you, what, what I like to do is I like to select my top clients to work with, okay? If you're just getting started, then select your dream clients. What type of clients um, would you dream of working with? Or for me, I know my favorite type of clients are the clients that, um, you know, I send them the invoice and then they pay it like that. Those are the type of clients I like, okay? So just think about your top favorite clients, your dream clients that you like to work with. And I want you to write down every single detail about them. Think about where they like to shop what they like to read, um, how often do they go to events and conferences, when they travel, what types of hotels do they like to stay in. I want you to think about everything, what type of TV shows they like to like, what type of movies they watch, okay, what type of shows they watch and TVs and all of that stuff. So we're going to think about that and we want to write down everything because what we're going to do is we're going to recreate an avatar of that person and target people that are just like them, okay? So when you are setting up things for your targeting on your sites and pages and social graphics, um, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to choose photos and create designs that speak to them, okay? So you'll select the best images, the graphics and content for them that you know will grab their attention and you'll need to do this for each individual audience. So let's just say if one of my audiences is, um, I've been working with a lot of authors lately. So let's just say that I want to attract more female authors that have at least one um, Amazon bestsellers book, okay? So then I'm going to make sure that I am using graphics and images of females. I'm going to be using photos of books or a beautiful desk with maybe someone typing or something like that. And when I write the copy that goes on my page in my social media, I'm going to call them out. I'm going to say, maybe you've been successful at writing before, but you know that there's more and you're ready to hop on this journey so that you can start booking more speaking engagements. You need to let us set up your, um, your book me landing page or something like that. So that's an example of how you would speak to that audience and how you would communicate with them visually online. Um, writing effective copy, I just gave you all an example of that um, with me saying maybe you are 
an established author or somebody that has written in the past and you need help in this particular area, make sure that you're speaking to them. So we want to make sure that all of this is tied together. So when we create that copy, we want to make sure that we're calling them out, okay? Um, when I create copy for the sales page for the Vision to Life Master Planner, I'm on there and I'm saying this master planner is for visionary leaders, business minds, nonprofit founders, and I'm calling them out. So make sure that you call them out when you put your copy on social media or on your website, okay? Your emails and all of that. Onlookers to buyers. So you wanna make sure that you're directing them exactly where you want them to go on that particular post. If I am targeting women authors that have had a bestseller in the past, then I'm going to be letting them know. If I'm on Instagram, I'm gonna be telling them, click the link in my bio so that you can take advantage of our book me landing page special. We're gonna create your book me landing page so you can get booked for more speaking engagements. Simply click the link in our bio. So I'm directing them exactly to where I want them to go because what good is a nice post with saying all the right stuff with all the right graphics if I'm just like okay bye at the end and I'm not telling them how to move forward um, on Facebook you can actually copy and paste the link Instagram as many of you all know only gives you one opportunity to have a clickable link right now so the link in your bio on Instagram is clickable but the link in your post is not clickable so we want to make sure that we're directing them to click the link in our bio on Instagram and when they click that link in our bio that page needs to be a page that was structured for best results, okay? That's all I'm gonna say, because we are on social graphics today. That's a whole nother training, but we're gonna stick to the topic that we're on right now, okay? So yes, so make sure that we're directing them where we want them to go with uh, by dropping the link or directing them to how they can get to the link about the offer or whatever it is that you just posted about not the it's not always the home page of your website send people direct links if you want them to schedule a phone consultation with you don't send them to the home page of your website send them the direct link to schedule the phone consultation just like for this example that i'm giving you all if i want people to purchase a book me landing page i'm not going to send them to the home page of my site i'm going to send them the direct link to either that sales page or that checkout cart page okay all right so moving right along this is a part of de determining your target audience choosing testimonials okay so once your onlookers have turned into buyers and they're happy with the services or the products that you have provided we want to make sure that we follow back up with them and we get a testimonial okay um pacific cases we want to make sure that we highlight so we want to highlight certain testimonials that may speak to other people that are in our target audience so now we have with the, um, let's just say, using me for example again, with the women authors, and I'm promoting to them for them to purchase a book me landing page and letting them know that the benefits is that it's going to help them book more speaking engagements. And I'm running down the list. So once I've done that successfully with some different women authors, now I'm going to get testimonials of them saying that my services really helped them in this area they were able to get um three extra bookings every single month because of the service I provided for them and all of that stuff so that's going to provide social proof and now other people that are in that target audience are going to be drawn to it because um nothing sells better than word of mouth Okay, that's why you see a lot of companies that barely even advertise, they just do the, the affiliate programs, okay, because they know that nothing sells better than word of mouth, all right, so connecting with new prospects, all right, so then you can monetize and 
connect with new people as you convert them, okay? So we want to convert more people from onlookers to buyers, and our testimonials are really going to help us to have that monetization flow going, okay? All right. So is this helping y'all? Let me know if this is helping you in the chat. Um, the next thing that we're going to go over is what you should know about SEO. And then we're going to have a Q&A session, okay? So if you have any questions about your social graphics or anything that we're covering today, you'll be able to ask me in just a few moments, okay? So some things that you should know about SEO. So we went over communicating with your social graphics on your social media. We went over communicating visually with your digital visuals from your sites, pages, social media graphics, and all of that. Because when somebody clicks to get more, they're going to land on a page that needs to be similar to what they saw on the post. So the same branding colors, maybe the same digital visuals and all that good stuff. Um, next, we talked about your target audience and the best ways, best practices to communicate with them. And now we're talking about SEO. If you don't know what SEO stands for, SEO is short for search engine optimizations. So we are going to talk about communicating with the search engines like Google, okay? All right, so if you wanna communicate with the search engines, your sites and pages are going to have to have relevant keywords. So on the back end of your website or your landing page platform, whatever you use, you wanna make sure that you have your keywords, your metadata, title and descriptions set up for each page or sometimes you can just do like a general one and it'll have the same social graphic for each page and also you can set up an image that will display on social media and also through text messages so have you all ever and if, if this is happened before if you've noticed this before I want you to drop a number three in the comments have you ever sent a text or made a post on social media with a link in it and you didn't post a picture but a picture popped up so if you sent a text message or dropped a link on social media a text message with a link in it or you type something on social media with a link in it and you saw a picture pop up but you know like I don't know where that came from. <laughs> so basically that is a part of SEO. So whatever link that you shared on the back end of that website, it's connected to an SEO image. Okay, so I see a lot of yeses. So this is something that happens all the time. So basically, if you want to change the SEO image that pops up for your brand for whatever page that you're sending to people, you can edit all of that on the back end of your site. So you can edit the title that pops up. You can have if a description pops up because I know sometimes you might see that a title or a description pops up along with the picture and sometimes it might not. If a picture doesn't pop up, they don't have a, a SEO image set up. If um, a title does not pop up, they don't have that set up. If a description does not pop up, then they don't have that set up, or it might be the particular platform that they're using doesn't allow that. But um, here being in 2022, majority of them have to where you can go in and edit your SEO settings for your overall website. If you just want the same thing to pop up, no matter what page is shared, or just for you know, each particular page can have its own SEO image, its own title, and its own description, okay? All right, so that's how that's done um, when we're communicating with the search engines. That has to be done from the back end of your site. Um, on social media, social media has their search engines as well. So you know that you can use the search feature on Facebook and the search feature on Instagram to find certain things. Um, Facebook normally just pulls from whatever text is in the post. So it kind of skims through the text. So 
and also like profile titles, names, groups, you can kind of filter those searches. Um, and Instagram typically pulls from hashtags. So that's why you always see people hashtagging it down on Instagram, because people can search for a particular hashtag and pop up in that search feature. Okay. All right. So link rich back link. This is more on the website end, but basically, if you have a lot of links on your website, it's going to help to improve your SEO. And I'm just going to keep that one short and simple because I see we are getting to the hour mark. Okay, so also Google Search Console. This is something that I want you all to make sure that you look into is having your company on the with the, set up with the Google Search Console account. It's a free account and it's gonna help you connect your SEO to your sites and pages so that Google can more directly talk to your website because what it does is it sends out um it's like little like a little spider web that's why it's called the the world wide web because it's like a spider web and as the spider is crawling the web and crawling through your websites and landing pages and all that good stuff it likes to keep going so if your page is a dead end let's just say we land on your landing page and we can maybe submit a contact form, but it's no outside links or internal links. We like internal links. Um, it's no links for it to continue to go. Then it's not gonna actually prefer that site over others. So think about that as well. Um, that's why a lot of blogs and large e-commerce stores do really good with popping up on the search engines. Also, another thing, Google whitelist. I haven't figured this out yet, but apparently you can pay Google a specific amount of money and they'll make sure that your stuff pop up first. Now, I know we've all heard and seen Google ads, but um, Google whitelist is a little bit different. I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe like their stuff, you know, it's only for like the top people. Like I know Jay-Z, his clothing line, um, pops up if you just search for like planes or something like that and um and his seo is not even set up on his site the right way i can see because it's a certain um tool that i use so i can pull up any page and i can see like the seo metadata so it'll show me like how many links are on this site how well the seo is performing and things like that so yeah i was um checking that out and that's when i thought about um google whitelist so it is a way that you can do that but um you have to have a lot of money to do those things so in the meantime we really want to make sure that we're focusing on what we can and making sure that we're sharing our social media links on our sites and pages and also connecting people from our social media account back to our sites and pages okay all righty, so we are about to wrap it up, but before we wrap it up, I just want to go over some really important highlights with you. Um, make sure that you're doing the important work. I know sometimes as business owners, you know, founders, creative entrepreneurs, visionary leaders, a lot of times, you know, we get so focused on what's right in front of us that like I was telling you all earlier, like I would go months without posting anything. And I didn't care because I felt like my core, what was most important was getting done. My clients were happy. They were getting their things and their designs turned back over to them in a timely manner. And I was available to be there for them. I might not have been posting on social Social media but that was still important okay so we want to make sure that we are doing the important work show people the purpose of your brand okay we want to create sites pages and graphics that 
show people the purpose of our brand. We want to also show people the purpose of our offers, our individual offers. Um, go into great detail and you'll see a good example of that on the sales page that I'm gonna share with you all for the Vision to Life Master Planner. And I'm gonna also give you all a discount coupon as well just for being here. And um, let's see the next thing on here. So we want to show people the purpose of our brand, show people the purpose of our offers, and we want to deliver deposit-worthy quality, okay? Okay, when they purchase from you, is it deposit-worthy quality? Do they feel like, oh, I wish I could get my money back for this? Or do they feel like this is, the best money that I've ever spent and it was worth every penny okay so we want to think about that um another thing that's super important and this has been able to help me tremendously set your unique brand apart we were all created differently and in some ways similar, but no two people are the same. Just like a set of identical twins. They might look alike, but once you get to know them, maybe even after just meeting them one time, you can clearly tell each one apart, okay? Same thing with your brand. Nobody else can do it the way that you do it. Nobody else can do it with the same passion and the same vision that you have to do it with. So make sure that you emphasize on the things that make your brand unique and really set yourself apart, okay? While you're showing people the purpose of your brand and the purpose of your individual offers as you promote them. You're also gonna need you a promotion schedule, okay? Okay, and be consistent no matter what. That's one thing that I had to learn, like I told y'all before, when I was going like months without posting, it killed my engagement rate, it killed a lot of, um, you know, things in the algorithm for my page, and then having to build it back up is something that, you know, it's very possible, but it's something that can be avoided if you kind of just be consistent from the jump. So that's something that we want to make sure that we adopt early on, okay? All right, so next we are looking at the Vision to Life Master Planner. So these are a few testimonials of the planner and I'm going to drop the link in the chat and I'm also going to drop the discount code um, well, I'll just tell you all the discount code and let me plug up my battery so it won't die on y'all. And power saver mode. Okay, so let me plug this up real quick and then we'll be able to start Q&A. So if you want, you can go ahead and start dropping your questions in the comments. and I will get them answered for you, okay? So any questions, concerns, comments that you might have, go ahead and drop them in the chat. And I'm gonna um, drop the link to the Vision to Life Master Planner. It's really gonna help you plan these things out. It's great for scaling and growing your brand. And since you are here inside of the workshop today, I'm definitely gonna get you 50% off. And you can also schedule a free phone consultation with me anytime. Just use the coupon code GOALS at checkout, okay? So if you use that link that I just dropped in the chat, use the coupon code GOALS when you get to the checkout page and then you'll be able to get your 50% um, off. Okay, so someone asked Caroline, thank you for being engaging. Would you recommend personal photos or logos? Um, it depends on your brand. Does your brand have you as the forefront are you like the um, the way that your company is branded? Are you like the main person or are you kind of like behind the scenes? Um, because 
for me, and that's a really good question, by the way, because for me, when I first started my company, um, as you can see, my logo, Professional Creations, is right here at the bottom of this slide. Um, but when I first started my company, I wanted to be behind the scenes. I was like, I don't need to have my face on everything like that. I just want to be behind the scenes. And I enjoy designing websites and creating promotional designs. And this is just what I want to do. Um, but as I began to grow, I realized that your no like and trust factor increases the more personal that you are. You might notice that you all can't see the slide. Am I still sharing my screen? Let me see. Mm -hmm. We're still on the communicating with the search engines slide. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what's going on. That's okay. Did it change right there or y'all still? Yes, okay. Do the important work. Do important work. Okay, yes. So this is the do the important work slide. Take a screenshot of this slide, okay? And then I know, Tamika, you're going to be sending out the recording. So you'll definitely have a recording. Um, definitely. But thank you for letting me know that, Ms. Coleman. Okay, so um, this was the slide that I was showing you all when we were talking about the Vision to Life Master Planner. These are some of the testimonials. You'll also see them on the sales landing page. I dropped the link in the chat. So if you click there and use the code GOALS, then you'll be able to get 50% off and you can always schedule a free phone consultation with me anytime. Okay, so here we are, but this is where we are on the question and answer segment. So back to your question. Back to your question, Caroline. Um, so I learned that your no like and trust factor increases when you share more personal things. So what I did is I created my Tech Queen brand and I started live streaming um from that end so I am the face on that side but on the professional creation side if I want to just be behind the scenes I'm actually trying to get it to a place right now I'm supposed to be hiring a project manager next month but I'm trying to get to a place right now where if I need to kind of step down or take a break or you know take a week or two off take a vacation or something I might get sick anything so I'm trying to get it to where my team can still run things without me regardless of if I'm there or not okay did that answer your question Caroline if not let me know okay cool may have to reshare okay Tony Ellis what you need to reshare Anybody else got any questions? So Courtney, okay. the, uh, Master Planner, the link that you just dropped, is that their takeaway for attending today's session? Is that what that is? It, yeah, when you okay. use that with the coupon code GOALS, then you'll be able to get 50% off. And then also um, I will send you a copy of Shine Online Volume 1. That's on the next slide, I'm sorry. I'll send you a copy. I don't know if y'all saw that slide or not, but I'll send you a copy of Shine Online, the workbook. It has a ton of different things in there that's gonna help you with your topics and titles. It's gonna help you with your keywords. Um, it's gonna help you with a lot of things as far as like your email content, your copy for your sites and pages and all of that. So, um, Anybody that purchases it today will also get the shine online as well. Okay. And then, um, okay, this was awesome information. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you all found it helpful. The slide up and running properly. Okay, y'all can see everything fine. This was great. Okay, I'm glad that you all found what I shared with you today helpful. Um, let me know if you have any more questions. And if not, I'm going to turn it back over to Tamika. Thank you, you, you Courtney. Else you need to say, Tamika? 
Thank you so much. That was awesome. Always great, great information. And I kind of assume that everything you introduced today that you kind of you do those services or you offer those services that you presented today. Um, you had several things in some of the, the previous slides about um, call to actions and landing pages and things like that. And from what I know of you, you, pr you provide those services. So um, hopefully you've, you've gotten some new clients from today's session. Um, Sherry, would you mind posting our poll for us? And I just wanted to let everyone else know that's also on the meeting that um, as a part of this professional development series, we have four classes. This was our second class. And once again, Courtney did an awesome job. And by attending all of these sessions, you do get a certificate of completion for each one. And each presenter has agreed to give away what we call a takeaway or a perk from each seminar, something that they give back to you as a business owner, from business owner to business owner, I'm giving my services or I'm giving something to you for attending this seminar and finding out about the type of services that I offer. So hopefully you guys can partner one day, which is what it's all about. So um, just so you would know, her, her Shine Online and her Master Planner, those are the takeaways that Courtney has provided today for those that showed up to um, attend her seminar. So again, thank you so much, Courtney. Your information is always so so much so grateful. We're so grateful to have you and your information is always so great. Yes, thank you. I'm grateful to be a part of it. Are there any more questions for Courtney? We, we do have two additional seminars um, scheduled uh, for March and May, and I mentioned those earlier, but you will be hearing more from us about those additional seminars. Ms. Scott, um, would, like to, would you like to close us out? Any closing remarks? I just wanna say thank you, Courtney. It was very interesting. It was very good, and we appreciate you so very much. And we appreciate each of you for taking time, like I stated earlier, to be here with us. Please don't forget the next one is March the 22nd. And if you can, make plans to join us. Thank you and have a great day. Remember, it's 2-22-22. Thank you.